Good evening, everybody. My name is Adie Patterson, and this is the school that I went to. It was a boarding school in the country, only boys. And I spent a number of years at that school. That's a picture of me. It's a passport photograph for my first trip outside the country. And there's another picture of me. Uh, this is a play. Uh, those of you who like skinny jeans, I'm wearing bell bottoms. You might notice that. And I'm actually a mad scientist in that play. And you can see the nuclear symbol is where, there as well, and the word metabolism. This was me as a young person. In that same year, I visited this facility. Uh, it is in Pelindaba in South Africa. It is a research reactor. And that pool that you see in front of you is what keeps the radioactivity and the nuclear materials away from humans, because water is a very good protective uh, device to keep uh, the, the radiation away. I walked across a bridge above that pool and looked down at the blue glow. The blue glow comes from uh, nuclear reactions where electrons leave the nucleus uh, at a very high speed and then they slow down and turn blue. Uh, and so at this reactor on that day, having been earlier in the year a mad scientist in a play, I decided to become a scientist in my life. It was a big change for me. It was a moment when I, I thought, maybe we can do something with science to make a difference. I was at this facility a number of years later. I've finished my PhD. I've done a postdoc at the University of Leeds. I'm back in South Africa. Mandela has been released from jail. He is not yet the president. We're on the journey to democracy. I was involved in the National Research Lab and it was my opportunity to join an advisory group for this facility, a timber labs, it's now called, down in Cape Town. And this facility in front of you is a very big accelerator. And it takes protons and turns them around very rapidly. And then a beam of protons can come out of that machine and they used to do science. But I got a great surprise when I got to the timber labs because I found instead of physics labs, a hospital was connected to this facility. What was a hospital doing connected to a physics lab? Well, the dream of the man who built this facility and the people who helped him was to use protons to treat cancer, to take that proton beam and to uh, inject it into a beam line and then into the tissue and finding the cancer. You know, the amazing thing about accelerators and these particles, protons, or now carbon ions also used, is that when you uh, inject them into a cancer, they drop all of their energy. If you can get it right, they drop all of their energy into the cancer cell and destroy it. The other tissue is left relatively unscathed. Now, these are cancer cells. They're neuroblastoma. One in six people on planet Earth will die of cancer. It is one of the major diseases that we face. And nuclear science and technology is making a big difference with proton and carbon therapy to the treatment of cancer. I want to give you a picture of how it happens. The red balloon is the cancer. The white balloons can be the skin, they can be the bone, they can be brain tissue, but they're not cancerous. They're perfectly normal tissue. The cancer is deep inside the brain. And what happens uh, proton therapy is the beam goes through all of that tissue that is uh, not cancerous without damaging it hardly at all. It's remarkable that at a certain energy, if you get the energy right, it drops all of its energy into the cancer. It's a remarkable principle. It's called the Bragg peak. And that's why uh, in South Africa at that time, they were doing the very early studies to see how to control the beam and to be able to accelerate the particles and drop all of the energy in the cancer. Now, of course, many of us who are a little bit older had particle accelerators at home. Do you remember your particle accelerator? It was a TV. A TV, the old ones in big boxes, for those of you who are younger, we used to have TVs in big boxes. Uh, and they really took a beam of electrons and accelerated them and then scanned the beam across the screen. And because that scanning was happening 50 or 60 times a second, we could see the images. That was a particle accelerator 
So you're very familiar with particle accelerators. These just happen to be very, very big ones. Here is a particle accelerator. Now, this is where it's interesting. Does anybody know where this particle accelerator is? Has anybody been there? Some of you may. It is the carbon and proton facility at Wiener Neustadt in Austria. This is a very beautiful, right up to date, brand new proton and carbon therapy facility. And the joke is, of course, that there isn't one in Australia. And so Austria has this remarkable facility to treat patients. They're going to develop clinical protocols. Uh, there are carbon facilities in Germany, in Italy, uh, in Japan, uh, in China, uh, none in the English-speaking world, because the English-speaking world chose protons, and everybody else is choosing carbon. It's one of the big debates. Who will um, be right? I believe uh, that carbon therapy will ultimately be the most important, uh, and I hope that we will build the first English-speaking carbon therapy facility in the world in Australia, but this one's in Austria. But back to reactors. This is not the Safari reactor, this is the Opal reactor in Sydney, uh, just in the south of Sydney. Uh, again, you can see the beautiful glow of the accelerated electrons slowing down. In this reactor today, we're taking another approach to dealing with cancer. Particle therapy is very good at dealing with solid cancers that are quite large. But some of you may know that cancers can distribute themselves right across the body. And we are working with a new cancer treatment, uh, which was developed in Germany and is being used around the world, um, that takes lutetium. Uh, lutetium is an element, number 71, uh, and you can see there the lutetium atom. The electrons that uh, treat the cancer do not come from that cloud of electrons which I'm showing you over there. They come from the nucleus. Uh, it's an unstable atom, and it wants to break down. And so when it breaks down, it lets out this very high-energy electron. Now, the important thing that we can do is we can attach the lutetium atom to a cancer-seeking chemical. And the cancer-seeking chemical goes and finds where the cancer is, attaches itself uh, to that cancer, um, uh, and that cancer then can be destroyed by the lutetium as it decays. And so in this particular case, uh, this is the case of Barry uh, Enfield, and uh, Barry has been part of a clinical trial in Melbourne uh, using the lutetium atom uh, as the basis of that trial. Now, the pictures I'm going to show you now may not be of Barry because we've got to protect, the, in a clinical trial, we protect the confidentiality of patients. But I know that Barry's in good shape because uh, one of uh, my team uh, at Anstow phoned him this week to ask if I could use his name in this talk, and he agreed to it. And so this could be a picture of Barry's cancer. It started off in his prostate gland, but it's been distributed all over his body. Those red symbols you see there are actual images of the cancer uh, that Barry uh, was suffering. He had three treatments with lutetium, separated by about two weeks each. And this is the situation he is now in. The cancer has been completely eradicated, and he is well. Now, these treatments are being developed around the world, and lutetium and other isotopes that have this particular characteristic are going to be an important part of the battle against cancer into the future. So, what does this mean for us? Nuclear science and technology is making a massive difference in people's lives because it is saving them from the scourge of cancer in our society. And we are just at the beginning of a new revolution. It's a carbon revolution, it's a proton revolution. 170,000 people have been treated with protons and carbons. It's a small number, but there are more than 100 facilities around the world now, and they're being opened every year. But using reactor-based techniques, we are also going to amplify the war against cancer by bringing new treatments. The patient and the clinician are the critical part of this. They adopt these technologies from the nuclear physicists, the radiation physicists, the people who provide the solutions. So nuclear science and technology is making a difference. It's making a critical difference in the lives of many people. And there are many people, hundreds and thousands, 
who have contributed to this. You know, when I was 16 years old, I didn't know that I would end up in Australia uh, working with a team of people around a reactor, uh, working with new solutions to treat ca cancer. To me, it is one of the greatest privileges. But the greatest privilege of all is to see the next generation of nuclear scientists, physicists, engineers, coming to join the team that is going to bring health and better outcomes from cancer for people around the world. It's to them that I dedicate this talk tonight as I show you again the beautiful blue glow that is bringing hope to so many people. Thank you.